This screencast is part of a series on ultrasound physics. In this screencast, I will introduce you to the different types of Doppler ultrasound. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to describe the differences between the different types of Doppler imaging commonly used in radiology. And we will cover each of these different types in order. Let's start with pulse wave Doppler ultrasound. When you use pulse wave Doppler ultrasound, you are measuring frequency shifts within a narrowly defined Doppler gate or sample. That Doppler gate tends to be only a tiny fraction of your field of view. You wanna place that Doppler gate in the center of the vessel of interest and recognize that you are only measuring frequency shifts between these two little parallel lines. Those frequency shifts are then recorded to generate a waveform. And that waveform is a reflection of the relative change in velocity over the cardiac cycle. When we angle correct for the direction of flow relative to our ultrasound beam, we can then generate velocity measurements that are accurate when angle correction is accurate. Now let's look at a spectral wave Doppler ultrasound image and discuss the importance of the different lines or markings on the image. First, we have the gate or the sample volume. When we are doing spectral wave Doppler ultrasound, we are only measuring the frequency shifts that are occurring within that small gate or small field of view. That gate is adjustable. We can make it wider, we can make it broader but it should fit nicely within the vessel of interest and hopefully be centered within that vessel. In addition to the gate outlined in yellow, we will have the line of incination. This is a representation of the direction that our ultrasound waves are traveling in. Realize that the motion that we are trying to measure is not necessarily traveling in parallel with our ultrasound waves. Because it is not they are not traveling in parallel, we need to angle correct to determine the angle of incination. We angle correct with a user-defined line that is typically a small white line I've now highlighted in purple. We adjust that white line to reflect the expected direction of movement or motion or flow within the gate. So if we think the blood is flowing this way within the gate, we adjust the line to reflect that expected direction of flow. <clears throat> Once we have adjusted for the expected direction of flow, we calculate the angle of incination as the angle between that direction of flow and the angle our ultrasound waves are traveling in. We can then take the cosine of that angle to accurately calculate the velocity of flow within our gate. Now let's discuss the waves generated by our spectral wave imaging. The wave is a representation of the relative velocity across the cardiac cycle. Waves above the baseline tend to reflect motion towards the probe. Waves below the baseline tend to reflect motion away from the probe. Remember, the motion we're talking about is only the motion within the gate. We can adjust our scale and we can correct for the angle of motion to calculate accurate velocities. Now let's look more closely at the key features of an arterial waveform. Typically the highest velocity point in an arterial waveform is peak systole, which occurs at the end of left ventricular contraction. We are often going to compare peak systole to end diastole, which is the end of passive flow just before left ventricular contraction. One common way we assess the change in velocity over time is with the systolic upstroke, also known as acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the change in velocity over time. So how long from end diastole to peak systole, and what is the change from end diastole to peak systole? A normal arterial waveform has a brisk upstroke. When we have delayed acceleration or blunting of that systolic upstroke, that can indicate proximal stenosis, and is commonly referred to as parvus tardis. We also often look at resisted index, particularly in transplant organs. The resisted index is an assessment of the 
difference between peak systole and end diastole with respect to peak systole. In a high resistance system, like a transplant organ that is undergoing rejection or a transplant organ that has a venous thrombosis, there will be decreased passive flow. In diastolic velocity will be less than normal and the resistive index will go up. In a low resistive system, such as a system with an arteriovenous fistula, there will be increased passive flow, increased in diastolic velocity, and therefore the resistive index will go down. If there is a proximal stenosis that causes a decrease in peak systole, the difference between peak systole and end diastole will be decreased and your resistive index will drop. Now let's discuss color Doppler ultrasound. Spectral wave Doppler ultrasound is a more quantitative form of Doppler ultrasound and color Doppler ultrasound is a more qualitative form of ultrasound. With color Doppler imaging, you are encoding the direction and velocity of flow with color. Brighter pixels tend to mean higher velocity, darker pixels mean a lower velocity, and the scale can be adjusted so that it is a reflection of the expected velocity within the vessel of interest. Typically, flow that is encoded as red is flow that is moving in the direction of the probe. Flow that is encoded as blue is flow that is moving away from the probe, although in some limited clinical applications, you may flip that scale. One advantage color Doppler imaging has over spectral wave Doppler is a much larger sample volume is possible. Instead of being limited to a small gate or sample volume, you, have a, you can adjust your sample volume based on the size of your vessel of interest, and it can be made taller, wider, and it can be moved around within your field of view so that you can sample all different size vessels in various sized fields of view. Power Doppler is similar to color Doppler in that it has a nice wide field of view. Its advantage over color Doppler is that it can detect very slow flow. You can turn the gain up very high without having much background noise. Its disadvantage is that traditionally you don't have directional information or even sometimes velocity encoded in the color. This is again used really in low flow situations or subtle flow situations. The times that I see power Doppler used the most is when there's a markedly hypoechoic lesion, whether it's in the breast or the neck or the parotid gland, that may be a cyst, but could also be a markedly hypoechoic solid nodule. And you want to try to see if you can detect flow within that solid nodule. And, and breast would probably be one of the most common applications. M-mode imaging is not a true form of Doppler imaging, but it is a useful low power form of imaging to detect and quantify motion. In M-mode imaging, a grayscale reference image is obtained. A point of reference is then set, and the motion with respect to that initial reference image is recorded over time. That motion can then be quantified, and in the case of first trimester ultrasound, it can be used to determine the fetal heart rate. In echocardiography, it can be used to calculate the excursion of the valve leaflets. It is a low power form of imaging, and therefore it is safe to use in the first trimester because of its low thermal index and its low mechanical index relative to power Doppler or relative to spectral wave Doppler. It is felt to be much safer to use. And in fact, we try to avoid any forms of spectral wave or color Doppler in the first trimester fetus. In summary, Doppler ultrasound detects frequency shifts due to motion. Pulse wave or Spectral wave Doppler ultrasound is a quantitative form of Doppler ultrasound that allows for the measurement of velocity over time. It's limited by a small gate or sample volume, and it has a relatively high thermal and mechanical index. Color Doppler ultrasound is a more qualitative form of ultrasound where direction and then velocity information are encoded in typically two colors with variable brightness. It can have a wider field of view or sample volume than pulse wave Doppler and is slightly lower in thermal and mechanical index. Power Doppler traditionally is a non-directional representation of flow. 
And its main advantage over color Doppler is a higher sensitivity for slow flow. M-mode Doppler is not truly Doppler, but it's a good low power imaging modality for detecting rapid motion. and is used predominantly for determining first trimester fetal heart rate and for evaluating cardiac valvular motion. I hope you've enjoyed this screencast on the different types of Doppler imaging. These are the references that I've used. I particularly like the first few chapters of Ultrasound the Requisites written by Dr. Middleton, who taught me so much about ultrasound and deserves credit for my understanding of ultrasound physics. Thank you for your time, and I hope that you will join us for the future screencasts in this series on ultrasound physics.